let's make some moss bowls. Hi friends, welcome to my little planty arts and craft corner. Uh, today we're making moss poles and I'm not talking about this moss pole, I'm trying to make the, uh, I guess I kinda wanna say like the one that's like really popular on Instagram. Uh, just cause I wanna try something new. I've never made this moss pole before. However, I have watched many tutorials and I uh, kind of took notes from Craig Moran's Instagram account, which if you don't follow him, follow him now because he is like literally the plant god. <laughs> However, I don't think I got the right sort of uh, um, mesh. I don't know what to call this thing. Um, so we will see. We are just going to wing it and if I need the extra support, here are some bamboo sticks. And by the way, hi. Welcome, I'm Marina, the Millennial Planter, and today we're making moss poles. So maybe you can make a moss pole with me or do some planty chores, and let's just get through this together. Uh, this isn't really gonna be much of a tutorial, uh, more of just like watch me fail and then hopefully succeed. <laughs> so what I have is I have this wire mesh thing here. I got it off Amazon. I will leave the link down below if it's actually good. I have literally heaps of sphagnum moss because that is what we're going to be stuffing the moss with. I have yarn to tie the mesh closed because I don't have enough zip ties. So if I run out of zip ties, I have this yarn. I don't know. And just some regular bamboo stakes that you can get at Home Depot for really cheap. They are really massive. I think they're about six feet tall, so I have to cut them, which is always a fun time, but it will definitely add some support if this mesh here is just too flimsy. So as we can see here, this is my Philodendron Mexicanum, and I made this stake out of bamboo. I made this moss pole out of bamboo stakes, and I just took the moss and kind of wrapped it around the stakes, and then I took some twine and I wrapped that all the way up so that all the moss was just like nice and stuck in there. And it worked out nice because you can't see the twine wrapped around the pole. However, this pole gets extremely dry super fast, which just means that the aerial roots don't really have a chance to latch onto it because the moss is so dry. And I definitely see that because this Mexican really did have some nice aerial roots, but they're all dried out because I don't wanna go around soaking this moss every day, every two days. So that's kind of the benefit of using the moss pole I'm about to make now because I heard the word on the street is that they don't dry out as fast because they're so packed with so much moss that the moss holds onto more water and more moisture. So I'm hoping that that's true because I have this beautiful Monstera elbow here. Um, she's a little thirsty and I just cut her, but she definitely needs something to climb. She has this really huge aerial root here and then she has another aerial root here that I just kind of stuck in the dirt. So I'm pretty sure it's like rooted in there by now, but I definitely want to make a moss pole for her. And then hopefully the next leaf she'll give me will be bigger or more fenestrated like this. So that's why she's kind of thirsty. I was waiting for her to dry out a little bit so I can make this moss pole and stick it in there. And then I also have a bunch of other plants like this philodendron radianum that as you can see, um, can definitely benefit from a moss pole. It is just too floppy and I feel like it'll be way easier to have on my shelf if it was more upright versus just trying to trail. And the leaves on this have gotten smaller. So, you know, one of the benefits to having moss poles is the fact that the leaves are going to get bigger because the plant will be able to climb like it's out in nature. So hopefully, you know, this time next year we'll have some nice big leaves. And yeah, let's just get on into this, uh, I don't know, DIY project. So, oh, this is awesome. This thing came with plenty of zip ties. So hopefully that'll be enough and they're all black. So you won't even be able to see them. 
and I really don't think I got the right material, which sucks, but we're just, we're gonna make it work. We're gonna make it work. Um, let's just cut some of this. It seems like it's pretty big, but that it's all folded over. So usually what people use is more of like, um, like a metal coated type of plastic. So it's more sturdy or like just a metal mesh material, kind of like chicken wire. And that's what I thought I got, but apparently I didn't. And there's not even a tag on <laughs> the plastic to let me know what kind of material this is. It's just like some sort of mesh, I don't know. But we can open it up. You can see that's what it looks like. So I definitely think I'm going to have to use the bamboo stakes, which is no problem. Thankful I had some on hand. If you don't have bamboo stakes, I really don't recommend using this mesh. I'm just gonna measure it. Let's see. Okay, so I cut a piece basically like so. And all I'm gonna do is just wrap it around the bamboo stake. Um, some people do use PVC pipes when they kind of do this because bamboo does uh, have a tendency to rot because it's a natural product. And with the dirt and the water, eventually it's gonna rot, but we will just worry about that at another time. So I'm just going to wrap this um, mesh around the pole and stuff it with moth. So let's just get to stuffing. As you can see, I have my moss here. It's already sort of damp, um, but I probably will just pour a little bit of more water on here. And I would really like to see any sort of moss pool you guys make. So send me pictures on Instagram. I just love talking to you guys. So send me pictures if you end up making a moss pool with me or just sort of any moss pools that you've made because clearly, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, but it's fine. It's fine. We live and we learn. This is also going to make a huge mess, but it's fine. So while I'm doing this, I just want to thank you all for the very, very sweet and heartfelt comments you all left on my last video. Um, it really just, it really means a lot to me and it's, nice to know that you all were happy to see me back to posting regular videos so thanks for that your comments really do make a difference i'm kind of gonna make this as firm as possible as stuffed as possible we're gonna stuff this thing like a sausage um is that weird to say i don't know i've never made a sausage <laughs> but we're just gonna stuff it really really tight so that it's nice and firm and upright and compact so that it can stay moist and my elbow can climb it. Okay. Aside from a, this big mess, I am just going to close this as tight as possible. I'm trying to line up the squares as much as I can so that it's all nice and even. And then you just zip tie them shut and hopefully that'll work. So far, so good. All right, so that is what it's looking like so far. And I'm not mad at it, honestly. I think the one advantage to having the metal wire is probably it's easier to make it tighter because this is kind of i don't know it's kind of hard to just like make it nice and tight if that makes any sense but i also am probably going to stuff it some more with more moss to see if i can get it tighter <laughs> now i'm just gonna trim it up a little bit I made this side a little bit thinner because I'm just gonna stick this side in the soil. And now I guess that's good. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. 
I'm just gonna, I guess, stuff a little bit more moss in the places that need it. I've also been seeing a couple of um, tutorials on people doing self-watering moss poles, which is where you kind of use a PVC pipe and you wick a twine around the pipe and then you put the moss on top of the string and the pipe so that you're able to wet the string and it'll just wick throughout the whole moss pole, which I think is brilliant. And maybe I will do that one day come spring because uh, that would be fun to do and then you don't have to worry about soaking the whole moss pole. Here we have it. It's a little funky, but that's okay. That's okay because you know what? It doesn't need to be perfect in my eyes. <laughs> I'm actually not mad at this. You can't really see the black from afar. I mean, you kind of can, but you kind of can't. It's a little crooked, <laughs> but I think my plant will love this. I hope my plant will love this. What, what, what do we think? Let's see. Yeah, I think that'll be perfect. I don't know how I'm going to attach a pole on top because when you use the metal chicken wire, it's kind of easy to just attach it to the top because the metal is more sturdy, but I guess we could always just use more bamboo and attach it to the top, or maybe I'm just gonna have to make a whole new one. We'll see. Future Marina will worry about that. And this is the ugly side where you can see all the zip ties, but I'm just going to leave that to the back so you don't see that side. And yeah, I'm not mad at this at all, actually. You know what? I had a potting mat to do this all on, and did I use it? No, no. Instead, there's just moss all over my floor. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Okay, so here's my wonderful, beautiful potting mat. Um, a lot of people are making these nowadays, but I actually purchased this from Phoebe, which is Welcome to the Jungle Home. She's just so amazing, so sweet, so awesome, and is coming out with a whole bunch of products. So you go, Phoebe. If this is pot bound, I might up pot it, but we will see. This also gives me a good chance to check on the roots of this baby. I mean, she's been doing really well, but uh, it's always nice to just check on the roots of your plants. Ooh, look at that. The roots look nice and healthy, a little dry, but like I said, she is thirsty. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to up pot this. Huh. I don't know if I have a bigger pot. Okay, so crisis averted here. I have this beautiful white pot my cousin gifted me for Christmas, and it doesn't look bigger, but there is a lot more space in this pot. It's just, I guess it's just wider. I guess full disclosure, a lot of people recommend not to up pot in the winter time, but um, I mean, I have indoor plants. I keep my house fairly warm, fairly humid, so they're really not gonna go into any shock. They're still getting plenty of sunlight. So if you kind of had the same temperaments in your house, then if you wanna repot your plant and it needs it, go for it. Um, but if you're too nervous and you wanna wait till spring or summertime, then by all means, do that. But I've repotted a lot of plants in the winter time and they've all been great, so let's just knock on wood. They're going to pot this up with the moss pole. And usually I do go for terracotta, but I have a super chunky mix here. I'm actually, I will have a reel on IG about how I make this. And then I will also link a video down below if you wanna see how I make my soilless mixtures but yeah i have a super chunky airy mixture so i know the plant's not gonna have any problems with being in a plastic pot hopefully this works out well and then i kind of want to finagle the plant so that the area root is in the pole that should work honestly i kind of just want to like share a proud plant moment here because I got this plant 
As a cutting with some aerial roots, and at the time I didn't even really know how to propagate it from aerial roots. It's super easy. I just stuck it in water and I stuck one part in moss and they both rooted for me beautifully. But yeah, the roots on this are just so lush and beautiful and I'm honestly just really proud of myself. Because lately I have been killing a lot of plants, but here we have a beautiful variegated monstera and it is just thriving. And I even see a little new nubbin here. So it's about to come out with a new leaf after I cut it. So it's just really awesome to see. But look at how good this is looking. I do wish I had a slightly bigger pot still, uh, but it's fine. There's still room in here for the roots to grow and I could always just repot it come spring or summertime into a bigger pot. And actually this mesh here is holding up really well. Great, right, well there we go. I'm going to take some plant wire and just secure the plant onto the moss pole. I did stick that aerial root right in the moss so Ah, that's really exciting because now I feel like in two leaves I will probably get a fenestrated leaf or it'll start climbing a little bit more. So oh, that's just, it's really exciting. Ah, I really love just this leaf, this fenestrated variegated leaf. It's really so beautiful. I don't mean to oh, hype up this plant anymore, but it's just, so pretty it really truly is and now I'm going to take this wire I keep cutting it too short you know plant velcro would be better <clears throat> but I just don't have any they have this at the dollar store and I usually stock up on it and it does a fine job and it's only a dollar so just be a little gentle when you are tying it and the plant is fine look at that I'm so excited. Oh man, okay. Now to water this babe and make sure this pole is straight because I hate when the pole is crooked, although I think I made it kind of crooked. It's fine. All right, and there she is. Oh, I am actually very proud of the way this came out. Oh, I'm so excited. I can't wait to update y'all to see and to show how she's climbing and doing. Now to just give her a thorough watering so those roots are nice and wet and then I'll probably wet the moss some more. So if you all end up making a moss pole like this, send me pictures on Instagram. Um, and since I have y'all here, I might as well just make another real quick. I'm just going to quickly make another pole for this radiatum that I showed you earlier, just to give us all a visual on how it looks on different plants. Just gonna make it really quick. not as good as I thought they were going to be, but that's okay. Roots still look healthy and I am happy with that. Actually, I think I am going to put it in a slightly bigger pot just so I can fit the pole on there. But oh, look at how pretty that's gonna look. I want one to like wrap around a moss pole. So I think I'm going to train this radiatum to wrap around this one eventually. Just a quick little thing um, while I'm potting this up. I do notice, so I used to use soil <laughs> back in the day and I actually switched to uh, coca coir. Just like straight coca coir as my rooting or as my potting medium because I noticed that it just doesn't hold onto moisture like regular potting soil does. 
and it's just made a really big difference in just my plants and my soil not retaining moisture so I look at a lot of my older plants where I was just still using soil and even in the terracotta it just holds on to soil so much moisture which if you are a chronic underwater that is a good thing so definitely like stick to um soil if that's you but you are somewhat of a helicopter plant parent like myself and you do tend to overwater i would i don't know if i would suggest it but i would say you know maybe try out some coco coir because i've noticed just making a chunky mix with coco coir has really helped my plants out i feel like it just adds more aeration it's more light it's not as dense as regular soil but also with that being said coco coir has no sort of nutrient it's just neutral um unlike soil soil has natural natural uh stuff in it natural nutrients <laughs> So you do have to fertilize. And I always like to add that Osmocote slow release fertilizer in all my plants. And as you all know, uh, or if you don't, I pretty much always fertilize my plants, especially if I see them still actively growing in the winter time. Um, I might weaken it a little bit than if I were to fertilize them in the growing season, but I'm always pretty much fertilizing my plants. And it's mainly just for that reason that coco coir just has nothing in it. And I wanna give my plants that extra nutrients to make them happy. But with all that being said, look at this beauty. Oh, I love it so much. And now I am going to kind of train the plant to be like that. Oh, how pretty will that look? So basically it's not flush against the moss pole yet, these roots, but once it gets used to being on the pole, it will eventually be able to be more up against it, if that makes any sense. I'm really bad at explaining things sometimes. I apologize. Oh, I already love this so much. Wow. Look at that. Doesn't it look so cute? The pole is a little crooked. Ta-da! <laughs> And just to give you a reference, I did pretty much use this entire box of moss and there was a lot of moss in here. So these poles definitely uh, do take up a lot of moss. So if you were going to make a couple of poles, I would suggest ordering a couple of moss stuff, moss packets, or at least get like that big block of them. Um, I have two more blocks of moss left because I still need to make at least three more moss for my plants, three more poles for my plants. Um, so that's going to be fun. <laughs> if you guys want me to do that on video, let me know. Maybe I will do some sort of like Q&A or something. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Here we have two beautifully moss poled plants. Um, yeah, hopefully they will like it and start climbing and attaching to them soon. I have high hopes that they will, especially my Monstera here. So it's just, it's really exciting. I will keep y'all posted on how they do. I hope you all liked this video and I would really appreciate it if you subscribed, if you're not. And also give this video a thumbs up if you liked it or a thumbs down if you didn't like it. Um, I hope you all are staying safe, sane and healthy, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.